Alright guys, today I'm going to talk to you about Proverbs 18.17. Um, Proverbs 18.17 says, The first to present his case seems right until another comes forward and questions him. And that's, I think that's the best way to put it right there. Um, the message puts it as, one second, um, the f first speech in a court case is always convincing until the cross-examination starts. And like I said on my website, I think the message is a good um, commentary, but it should not replace your Bible. And those that put together the message, from my understanding, would actually agree with that statement. Um, I watched an episode of Star Trek the other day where um, the captain, Captain Jonathan Archer, um, this so this takes place 100 years before Captain Kirk, actually. It's a prequel to the original Star Trek from the 1960s. Um, Captain Jonathan Archer was captured by the Klingons and put on trial. And he wasn't allowed to have a defense. He had this kind of puppet defense attorney. And the prosecution brought forward their witness, and um, they had just one witness. And they were asked, do you have any other evidence? like, no, but what more evidence do we need? And it sounded very incriminating towards towards the captain. It sounded very very awful. He was not given a fair. He was not being given a fair court case. Um, and I think that that's that really describes the verse very well. Throughout the uh, sh episode, which is called Judgment, and I think it was from season two of Star Trek Enterprise, um, it was all about hey, you know, he should have a fair court case. Um, both sides should be able to present their case. I think this is relevant in the the whole thing reminded me of the creation versus evolution controversy. So often um, you have in the media, the public schools, um, even often the Christian schools, um, the evolutionists are allowed to give their perspective. The creationists are not allowed to give their perspective though. Um, if we hear about the creation perspective, we hear a straw man argument. Um, now what that means is, I read a public school textbook where they said creationists believe that species don't change, and that's just completely false. Um, you know, the person was either lying, or they didn't bother to do their research, and either way, it's intellectually dishonest. Um, in reality, Creationists and evolutionists both agree that species change. They both agree in mutation and natural selection. They just disagree on what mutation and natural selection can actually accomplish. Um, we've seen new species form. Um, this is something that both creationists and evolutionists agree upon. Um, we saw there was a, mos a species of mosquito that formed, I believe it was in a subway a station. It, was, um, it had branched off from another species of mosquito. Now that's not evolution, that's a uh, mosquito is still a mosquito. Um, we have cave, I have a whole video on blind cave fish. There's fish that will swim into a cave and they, over the course of a few generations, they will lose their eyes. It used to be thought that it would take millions of years, but they did studies that ended up finding that it can happen within 13 generations. So a fish will swim into a cave and it'll be a normal fish, has eyes and everything. And over the course of a few generations, it will have it'll no longer have eyes. It'll just have little scars where um, there used to be eyes. And it'll you often the fish will lose their pigmentation too because you don't need pigmentation in a dark cave. Um, now, what I'm getting at with this is that if people don't hear both sides then they can't come to a fair conclusion. Even Charles Darwin said, um, and I don't know the exact quote, um, but even Charles Darwin said that, hey, um, he said in his introduction to On the Origin of Species, and people can look it up there, he said the only way to come to a fair conclusion is if all of the evidence and all of the arguments on both sides of each question are weighed. Um, that was Charles Darwin. You know, the Bible says the same thing. Um, now even during the Scopes trial, uh, during the 1920s, the ACLU said, hey, the only way students can get a fair education is if they hear this, the arguments from both creation and evolution. 
And of course, that's not that's, again that's not the exact quote. That's just a paraphrase. Um, but that's that's something that at, when I used to believe in evolution, I thought that you know I thought that I I knew about what creationists believed because places like uh, National Geographic, um, science textbooks, the TV shows, they misrepresent what creationists have to say. Uh, they won't even tell you that, hey, there's actual PhD scientists out there that are advocating for creation. Um, and you look around the internet. I, I have yet to find a, I have yet to find a evolutionist website that's honest about the creation perspective. You know, they always, they always give out lies. They always say that they always give out straw man arguments. They say, well, creationists think, teach that species don't change. Now, if you go to Answers in Genesis, which is, or greenslug.com, um, you have answersingenesis.org and greenslug.com are two good websites. Greenslug.com is mine. Slug is spelled with two G's, so it's G-R-E-E-N-S-L-U-G-G.com. You'll get a fair representation of the other side. Um, you know, but it would be, you know, a judge who only ever heard one side in a court case would not be a good judge. At the same time, um, if somebody wants to be scientific about something, um, if they're only hearing one side, that's not being scientific. That's not being objective. You have to hear both sides, otherwise you're not being objective. And there's a few other verses I want to uh, put out there that I thought were relevant. Um, Proverbs 18.2 says, A fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinions. And another uh, translation says, um, the first one was NIV and the second one is ESV, says, A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. And it kind of reminds me of the view. Um, And Proverbs 12:15 says, "The way of a fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice." And another translation, the ESV says, "The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice." And it's true. It's true. Um, and Proverbs 14:1 says, "For the director of music of David, the fool says in his heart, there is no God." They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. And by the way, in a in the biblical context, when you see the word trans that's translated fool, it's not somebody who's intellectually um, lacking. It's somebody who's morally lacking. You know, it's for um. For example, somebody who um, somebody who decides to just go out there and just live a corrupt, vile life, um, and not follow wisdom, not follow, not follow righteousness. They decide to be just this nasty person. Um, that would be a fool. You know, somebody who's just I'm gonna just go clubbing and sleeping with people that I don't know. I mean, that's it's somebody who's morally lacking. Um, and Proverbs 18.17 says, well, I already read that, um, the first to present his case seems right, to another comes forward and questions him. And I think that that's, uh, and that's what's important. I think that's what i got to say is um, you got to hear both sides. Whether it's creation and evolution, or whether it's something else, um, whether it's a judge arbitrating between two people, or you have a scientific question, you want to hear both sides. It doesn't just apply to creation and evolution; it applies to whether or not humans are the main cause of global warming. Um, it applies to um, different form. It applies to uh, Different subjects in, within stem cell research it applies to it applies to anything.
Um, you got to hear both. If there's a scientific debate, you got to hear both sides. Um, as the one side, the first side to talk is going to seem right. Um, I, I think that's that's enough for now. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye.